great. Sounds pretty good. This was actually the first time I tried it in the actual game. <laughs> Sounds pretty dope. I like it. Fits maybe even better than the previous track. Hi guys, my name is Borodante and welcome back to the game! Although we're not really doing the game today, I'm gonna talk a little bit about my progress in working on the soundtrack for the game. Because as horror games go, well actually that's not true. Not all horror games depend on the good soundtrack. Even Resident Evil. I mean, it probably has good sound, but you don't think about Resident Evil soundtrack when you think of Resident Evil, but Silent Hill soundtrack is the stuff. And as we all know, I'm a way bigger fan of Silent Hill than of Resident Evil, although I played all the games of Resident Evil, which is something I can't say about Silent Hill because that stuff mostly never came out on PC. <laughs> Anyway, I decided to really dig into this whole music thing and um, I actually had to change, I think, literally all of the software I've been using before. All of it is different now. And I just wanted to make this quick update, first of all, because it's been a while since I released a video. Not because I was so busy researching this, but because I was eating a lot of candy and wasn't able to do anything useful. I assume most of you guys have no idea how to make electronic music on your computer, the same as I was very recently. So, a few things about how to do it on the budget, like the closest to like the right way, meaning what kind of software to use and generally what are you even supposed to put together. Here's the thing, when you're working on the uh, piece of electronic music, first thing you need is a DAW. I actually, I'm not sure if anyone calls it DAW, it's D-A-W. Okay, I'll look it up what it means, <laughs> so you don't have to. Digital Audio Workstation. Sounds pretty descriptive, right? So this is the main host for putting your whole song together. And as a vlogger, I do a lot of editing in Premiere Pro and it looks somewhat familiar, but of course it's not for video, but only for sound. And the main point of this uh, DAW is to provide you with a bunch of basic tools to let you record stuff, to put tracks together and cut them in pieces, loop them, like this track right here is looped. You can see that with these little teeth showing up in here, this is a repeating pattern. And yeah, different ways to apply filters, adding like keys to these filters to change their parameters and stuff like that. But yeah, this is a cool program, uh, but as far as I know, especially if you're looking for free stuff, which is, keep in mind, you can totally make pretty solid music with, I think, everything free. That's like the biggest discovery I got recently, that to make music, you can go completely free. And as far as I know, this particular DAW called Cakewalk seems to be the best DAW for Windows. It's only on Windows, that's its biggest drawback, uh, I guess, like if you're on Mac, obviously. But on Mac there are other options as well, so you can just look it up, look for some articles from music-oriented websites with like 10 best free DAWs uh, for Mac maybe even, and you will definitely find really good stuff. Before this, uh, I was using a different DAW and it was called um, uh, Waveform, I believe, yeah, Waveform 11. So it looks like this, also pretty similar, they're all kind of the same of course, uh, point is, it's all good in its basic functionality, it's also completely free and all, and maybe it's even on Mac, I'm not sure. The biggest problem with it comes after you move to the next step, like other pieces of software you need to work with your DAW. And so after you find your DAW, now you need to find a whole bunch of different plugins. That's like the biggest thing, they're called VST plugins. So right here I have my own selection that I 
download it from the internet. All of this stuff is free. A lot of the times you need to like um, sign up on the website, give them your email and all. But yeah, you'll get all kinds of stuff. And it doesn't look like much, but actually there's way more inside of it. Like for instance, all the plugins from native instruments. And they make a whole lot of different really cool expensive plugins. But also they have quite a selection of free ones. Oh, right. It's like there's audio effects. There's uh, different types of plugins in Cakewalk. They're actually separated. So and here are instrument plugins. That's the main stuff. So Contact 7 and Reactor 6. And these are the two ones from Native Instruments. They're like the biggest thing to me so far because there's just so much inside of these plugins. Like for instance, Reactor 6 is in this track right here. It's applied like it's a, an instrument track. And if I click on this little button, it shows up. And and you pretty much mostly, even though you work inside of this uh, DAW, you actually work with actual sound, with actual music inside of these plugins. It's a whole bunch of different little windows all the time that you work with. Some of them work really cool and have a lot of functionality and cool animations and everything. It's good stuff. And yeah, plugins from Native Instruments uh, are really cool. Like um, these are the selection of plugins on the engine called Reactor from them. And right here you can see it's actually you can select a bunch of different plugins. I'm not sure if it's a good idea to replace it right now. I guess it's not. But yeah, you can completely replace a plugin inside of this plugin and all. There's a lot of stuff going on, even in just the free selection of it. So yeah, Native Instruments, they have this huge selection of plugins. They actually come pretty organized inside of this, um, like, sort of a download manager from Native Instruments. It looks like this, called Native Access. And in here, you pretty much look through their free stuff and uh, install whatever you're interested in, which is gonna be almost everything, I suppose. Oh, the free orchestra is something else. Just what I need for a horror cinematic experience. So that stuff is really cool, but what Native Instruments free stuff does, they mostly provide you with like, more like presets. They're like instruments for electronic music. They're not fully versatile synthesizers, but more like prepared stuff with uh, a whole bunch of variations. But usually like what I consider a fully versatile synthesizer is when all of these presets, you can just go ahead and achieve using different tweaks and knobs and all of that in the settings. Sort of like Photoshop brushes, you know, uh, it doesn't matter what brush you're looking at, you could repeat it with your own settings and applying an alpha texture to it. In this case, it's sort of locked behind the paywall, maybe in a way, like if you buy like all of these free plugins are like more a glimpse at what the big expensive plugins can do in native instruments. But nonetheless, they're totally an awesome set of tools. Like the selection of these instruments is huge and you can modify so many different things about them. In here, you can like draw stuff to change the way it all simulates. This is actually one of the craziest plugins. So the point is when you play it, um, every six, uh, whatever, six beats or whatever it's called. I don't know anything. I've never studied music or whatever. It restarts and repeats uh, the exact pattern you drew on the left side. And then what it does is it applies the algorithm of the simulation of life, the fundamental programmer kind of stuff. There's a certain set of rules like each pixel in here is like a living creature and based on who is surrounding it, it's either gonna be alive in the next frame or not and stuff like that and then it reproduces somewhere as well like it's a pretty cool thing like in high resolution you can look for hours at this stuff simulating and seeing if it survives or not it's a cool thing and in here it's applied to introduce a certain chaos and um, unpredictable variety to your beat so the main beat of the whole track right here is literally this stuff. So in here, this is represented in these um, eight separate instruments that have variable pitch, different kicks and everything set up. It's all very dynamic and cool. And yeah, different settings just go crazy. And actually, I think 
this particular plugin, like all of its presets are exactly what you're seeing. Like you can achieve all of them with just the settings in here. Uh, I guess it wasn't the best example in that regard. But yeah, another important thing I wanted to mention, like while Native Instruments plugins are really cool, I guess the most fundamental plugin for electronic music creation is a good oscillator-based synthesizer. And so far, my favorite one is Vital. This thing is really cool, and so far it has like the best interface. Not just in the way it looks, because it looks pretty damn cool, but also because of how like there are pages, like tabs, and in here everything is very like visual and clear. And yeah, the amount of functions you can make is really amazing, like the amount of envelopes you can apply and uh, just drag them onto anything. And while you're dragging them, so yeah, right now, if I just press the note, this envelope is applying a certain variation and value. And if I drag it onto something, you can see how that value is changing something about each element. And you can see exactly how it's doing it in real time. This is like very useful, not just pretty, but the fact that you're seeing exactly how things are changing. And you can then use your scroll mouse to see how much it actually affects and in which direction. So yeah, this is like really cool stuff. Far from every plugin has that kind of polish to it, especially if you're looking for free stuff. But another really cool synthesizer I definitely want to mention is this Surge XT. It's the latest version of the Surge plugin. I just recently found out about this new version. It's really cool. It's all on one page. Has a whole bunch of presets, of course, and everything. And yeah, uh, while it looks like just a bunch of uh, small stuff, it's actually quite multi-dimensional. And if you spend some time figuring out what it does, it's actually pretty clear. There are different stages in here and everything, three oscillators. But one of the most impressive things, I guess, is right here. It's like a sequential tree of how things are applied with each other because there are like two scenes. I'm not sure, like I didn't fully look into it yet, but the point is you can apply a huge selection of different filters right here, different effects to the sound. It's not just what you're seeing here. You can apply so many things in each of these cells right here. So yeah, this is a very powerful powerful thing as well, uh, but it may be a little bit harder to figure out what exactly you're doing if you're like new to it, and I am, and, and first I was working with this, and it always took a little bit of time to figure out what every new preset does exactly, because you're like not really seeing it when you're just playing it back. Nonetheless, like uh, bread and butter, bread and butter, really cool. Oh, and I almost forgot to mention, uh, waveform, uh, DAW, right? It's all great about everything, and it has its own cool plugins here and there a little bit, but when I try using any of the third-party plugins, not any, but many of them, they will always work very poorly in terms of just the rendering of the interface. And I'm not sure when exactly it happens and how, but it just like a part of the screen will just freeze and I would tweak the knobs but they won't appear to be doing anything and then if you like do this it will refresh that kind of stuff and at first I thought like oh this plugin is bad that plugin is bad and then like hold on a lot of plugins are bad apparently maybe it's the DAW that's doing that I remember the worst one was wave razor this really cool plugin like none of this seems to work but then if I do that you can see I changed these settings right here and this one so this one doesn't work at all and some of the other ones also have problems like this so yeah wave Form is a great free DAW with a lot of cool things, but yeah, it has a big flaw like a bug with the way it renders plugins. So that's a huge deal breaker, generally, of course. 
Another thing really worth mentioning is labs. This is a huge thing. I think it's like there is no even paid version of it. This is um, a huge deal, like a huge project. Musicians or music enthusiasts, I don't know, creating this amazing library of like really good sample based instruments right here with really cool controls. It's all minimalistic and everything, but you get quite a few cool pretty naturally sounding instruments, as well as all kinds of stuff, of course. And I should really look into it because their website constantly provides with a huge selection of these sample like albums that you can download and add to your library here. It's really cool. Actually, not a website. They also have this kind of uh, download manager. Here it is. And these are the albums. And yeah, there's all kinds of stuff in here. It's really cool to look into it. I don't think I've downloaded anything close to the best and most interesting and useful stuff from here so yeah this is uh this is an awesome stuff and pretty much the way you work is like um right now i'm using just keys on my keyboard that are mapped right here that's just to test it or you can just hit uh like record and actually record your notes and that's pretty much the way most people do it but also what you can do is you can uh, just draw the notes and then as you play it back it will be uh, playing all this stuff so that's the basic way to do it you use a plugin uh, just drag it in here it creates a new track of this certain instrument then you set it up by clicking here and changing stuff then you draw notes or hit record here and then start the recording and just in real time play either on your MIDI controller or you can use your keyboard mapped like this but you also need this stupid window around in order to make it work and yeah there's a downside to it comparing to an actual like piano keys because a keyboard can tell if you're pressing it fast or strongly or softly so always the same volume on all the notes not a huge problem but it's a, a pretty important part of playing a composition but yeah after you create your notes right now i created a whole bunch of separate stuff in here i can actually uh, bounce it into one thing like this and then i can click like looping and drag it out and it will repeat so this way you build your repeating patterns and everything and then another thing uh, after this is done we can go to effects plugins and in here i can uh, drop in like like valhalla super massive plugin and this stuff will apply like very massive forever sounding echoes and reverbs on top of these notes, like changing the sound of them. Massive reverbs, dark matter. What does that sound like? And it keeps going. Mm, sounds very nice in combination with this. Guess it will be easier to demonstrate it with Surge, that's for sure. <laughs> Let's hear this stuff. So right here we have... Pretty cool sound, has its own reverb a little bit, but nothing like Valhalla. Anyway, a lot of fun. <laughs> Takes some time to actually come up with good stuff, um, of course. And yeah, final extra control about how to deal with uh, things in time. Uh, you can see it right here. I have these lines going on. So if we open up automation lanes and widen them up a bit, 
We can see I use like Valhalla, super massive, and choose whatever the settings it provides available for me to animate right in my composition. And yeah, pretty much you can make things quieter or louder. In this one, this is the track that uh, has that main voice kind of of the song. So in here I have this strong change in the middle. That's where I apply a lot of strong surge effect uh, and I'm just using bypass to introduce it smoothly. But it's pretty much like, yeah, adding distortion. So if we, in here, we hear this kind of sound. In this section, it slowly becomes a lot more rough. But yeah, this is so far what I'm mostly using here. And I think if you just follow these simple steps of getting free stuff that's just sitting there online, you can uh, start making pretty cool music. Unlike me, <laughs> I obviously need a lot more practice. Also, another thing I tried and is another type of plugins that I find very interesting. It's like audio to MIDI plugins and uh, Neural Note seems to be the good stuff. Pretty much what it does is you can uh, like hum a melody you want to create or maybe play it on anything uh, that's not connected to your computer and just record it with a microphone. And then these plugins, they interpret it and actually instead of having having like an audio recording with like a waveform, it will actually create these notes like this. And Neural Node actually uses the, I don't know, machine learning stuff like that to do it. It's a little bit better, but generally don't expect it to be like perfect, but it does save some time and guesses many notes pretty well. And the way I tested it was actually using this guy. I'll go ahead and record, let's see how it goes. Something weird happened there in the end, but overall it was okay. So here's our sound. We can fade it like this a little bit if we want to. So now, since this is an audio effect uh, plugin, we drag it right here. And it actually almost doesn't matter where it is because what we need to do now is drag our recording right over here. It says yummy because it enjoys it. And here at the bottom, we can see immediately all the notes it generated. And clearly some of them are missing because my volume of notes jumps around a lot, I guess. So yeah, the clean result So yeah, you can clean up this stuff as well uh, a little bit, like uh, introducing what the shortest notes should be and stuff like that. Also, you can go like major or minor. I don't know much about that. So yeah, generally you can make decisions based on like whether you want to have a few but correct notes and then add the rest. Or you can have a mass of many notes and remove the extra. So like this, when there's more notes showing up, like higher sensitivity, sensibility, it pretty much even captures the very first note right here. So we get like pretty much a full composition here, but there's some noise surrounding it. And yeah, I dragged and dropped the whole thing like this and we created a new track with these notes. But now we need to apply some kind of instrument to it to make it sound not as ridiculous. And, okay, that's still sounding awesome. <laughs> Let's see. Very busy. <laughs> so anyway, this is a pretty cool way to do it. 
when you don't have like instrument that would be connected to your computer. It will definitely, you know, speed up your manual drawing of the notes. And yeah, why I like using this thing instead of just, you know, drawing and trying it. I just, you know, randomly bought this in Italy a few months ago. And what I found is it's really cool to just think with an instrument and come up with new loops and everything just basic melody segments when you're able to do it in real time quickly and try different variants uh, it's a lot more fun and a lot more productive that way but like arguably I could use my keyboard for that generally but the keyboard is uh, quite a dull and faceless way to do it and here it's more visual and tactile so I'm just more handy with it. But yeah, generally I'm kind of looking at uh, stuff like this a little bit. I'm not sure if I'll necessarily need it, because the keyboard is generally pretty good, the PC keyboard. Uh, but this stuff is like, it's pretty tiny, you know, has Type-C connection and uh, all kinds of stuff uh, that you may find very useful, like these things are programmable and uh, pressure sensitive, like force sensitive, uh, same as all the keys, a bunch of sliders and knobs everywhere, some touch controls as well. So that's pretty cool to be able to do stuff in real time like this. But, you know, whatever. I'm just saying that I know that stuff exists and maybe, <laughs> but generally this is also a pretty cool way to do it. Yeah, I'm, I'm pretty happy with this track. It's kind of short, I'll probably make a very long version of it uh, to play it in the game or something, I don't know. It will also evolve a lot, probably. So yeah, this is it. Generally, I'll probably edit the hell out of this video to keep just the basic introduction stuff. Do know that I described everything in here. <laughs> Hopefully, I did inspire some of you guys to try creating music yourselves, because I haven't paid a dime for all of this. And it's really powerful, like it's almost criminal that all of this is for free. But so was Blender, right? <laughs> I always, uh, you know, had some space in my heart for creating music every now and then, and uh, I feel like it will be quite fun to do it on a slightly bigger scale for the game now. So yeah, look forward for a lot more of custom songs in my videos in the future, I guess, if I'll have time to create those. <laughs> so yeah, this is it. Hope it was interesting to you guys, whoever you are. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, look forward to much more cool music in the game and in the videos, and I'm out of here. Thank you all for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye! Nah, it's kind of a daytime soundtrack, I would say. Yeah, generally, this looks better with this sound.